everybody did you miss me uh gina deluca here okay i am back uh, i know i have been a wall for a bit but the storms are mostly past and i think i can get back to um my regularly scheduled programming so uh very glad to be back at it and um yeah so uh, easing my way back in with things that I know well. <laughs> so going to be doing a moving straight pour here. Uh, I had some leftover paints that, uh, I wanted to use up. Um, hopefully they haven't been sitting for too long. Uh, the colors that I am working with today, we have some custom blends going on. This background slash base coat color is a mixture of Liquitex Basics in Dioxazine Purple and Thalo Blue. And I believe there was a touch of white in there um, mixed in with, because it was the purple. Uh, I had some purple left and I believe there was some white mixed in with that. This here is Thalo Blue mixed with the deco art americana decor satin enamels in pure white and there was a dab of the artist loft white mixed in with that and this color is a mixture of deco art americana decor metallics in copper and also in sterling silver so lots of custom blends going on here, but I think these colors will look very pretty together. The consistency that we are working with is about a two on my consistency scale. So these paints are mixed with one part paint, to two parts Floetrol, and then that mixture is then thinned. With my concoction of 90% water, 10% Floetrol, you can use just water as well. But this is the consistency. It is making a mound, but it disappears quickly. And it is making a nice, thin, even stream off of my stick. It's not lumpy. If you see lumps, if it's getting thin and then thick, you need to mix some more. But that's what we're going for. Before we get started, have you seen the Fluid Art Inspiration cards? If you have, you can fast forward about a minute, but if you have not, what we have are 52 cards. There are 42 technique cards, and each technique card has an associated video here on YouTube that will give you the exact paint brand color, consistency, the recipe, and of course the technique, all of the things that I can't fit onto a card. This is uh, the video on YouTube. This is the painting that was done in that particular video. This box here contains a tip for this particular technique. And here at the bottom, you have the color palette that was used in this painting. And then these two boxes can be used together as the basis of a two color palette. Or you can build off of those two colors. And there are eight bonus color palette cards. Each one has five color palettes use some of the colors or all of the colors, mix and match the bonus color palette cards with the technique cards, and you have more combinations than you could ever paint in a lifetime. These are available at my website, ginadeluca.net, and also at amazon.com. Okay, so because I'm doing a wandering straight pour, I'm gonna use a regular cup. I wanna see if I can get any fingerling action in there. I do like when that happens. So, oh, always check your consistency before putting your paint in your cup. The sauce may thicken upon standing. I think we're good. Doing about two ounces in the bottom there. I always like to make sure I put my paint in my cup first because I have in the past put too much on my canvas and then not had enough for my cup. And I like to reserve a bit to go on top of the cup at the end. You will notice I have already covered my edges. Um, I do this because the way that I mix the paints, it's pretty thin and I'm also using Floetrol. 
uh, which can sometimes not give you the best coverage on the sides. So I like to cover my edges first, troubleshoot before there's trouble. Otherwise, I have to come in later and touch up the sides because there's canvas showing through. And in a case like this, where I have a custom blend, finding that exact perfect blend of purple, phthalo blue, and white is going to be a challenge. Um, color matching is a lot easier in oil paints than it is in acrylics because acrylics dry so much darker. So I like to make sure I don't have to deal with that. And laying down a base coat will allow my poured paint to slide around easily, uh, more evenly, and will actually give me the most options with my composition because sometimes the coolest stuff that happens is on the edge of your puddle. And if you have a dry canvas, then something has to stick to the canvas first so that will be whatever part of your puddle hits the canvas first and as you're tilting that's going to be your edges so that is why I lay down these coats so now I'm going to do the light blue and the reason I'm going in this order is the paint that I put in last often ends up at the bottom of the cup that's my other kind of cup. We'll see if it works on this one. Pouring from up high. I want these paints to sink and churn. So I typically wind up with a tiny bit of whatever the last color that I put in um, ends up at the bottom of the cup and it ends up at the focal point of my painting. And so I like to put the color that has the most contrast in last because that is going to give me the most interesting effects in my focal point. And then I'm going to take what is left in this cup and put it on top. The deco art paints are matte, and when you use a matte paint with a glossier paint and you have mixed it thin enough for fluid dynamics to take effect, it has a hydrophobic effect, and that's what gives you the cells. And I want all of those cell makers to have the opportunity to touch one of the back, touch that background color so that it will create the cells. Okay. So, I think, let's make a mess here. And we're probably not going to see much of anything at first. So now this is going to be my focal point probably, so I'm going to pay special attention to this. Closer to the canvas as I get towards the end of the cup. That will give me more control. Okay, I'm just going to kind of even this out a little bit because it was all sitting on this side. 
so the goal here, I guess, is going to be to not lose that. It's going to be a challenge. We'll see what happens. Color is beautiful, though. Can't complain about that. I'm going to pop these bubbles. Old Bernie two times. Bernie three times today. Now, as you see, as I pop those bubbles, a whole bunch of these little cells popped up. The paint that is underneath has bubbles in it. And as it rises to the top, when you pop those bubbles, it brings some of that paint with it. And because these matte paints have a hydrophobic effect, it pushes the other paint away. It creates your cells. If I were to stretch immediately, I would still get these cells, but they would all pretty much kind of have this uniform size and shape. But if I allow this paint puddle to percolate, let these cells pop up, let them grow before I stretch, what will happen is when I do stretch, these cells will get bigger and they will end up having a cool 3D effect oftentimes. And that's how I get the boulder cells. So patience is key in this part. One of the reasons that I don't fast forward this part is because I want you to see exactly how long I'm actually letting this sit. I feel that is important information. Um, if I were to fast forward, you might rush it. And the longer I let this sit, the more of these cells pop up, the bigger they get. And then when I stretch them, the cooler they look. I do love copper and blue together. It is a lovely combination. And you'll see I'm not popping anything over here. I have enough happening here. I don't need to pop more. Um, one of the reasons that I use a background color, the same color as my base coat, is because if there were bubbles in this base coat, then they would pop up through my painting. And if I were using a white base coat, if I were using a white base coat, then I would have little tiny white cells popping up. And then that's going to look weird because it's not in my painting. So I use the color that's in the painting. So if I get those little tiny pinhead type cells, not a big deal. It matches. Not as big of a deal, anywho. Okay. So now I'm checking to see where the weight of my paint is. That is going to be where it is moving the fastest. And I'm going to use that to push my paint around. I think I think I'm going to come this way first. I want to do what I can to keep my focal point. Okay, now bringing the paint back to center. before, okay, that's looking like something. <laughs> Bringing the paint back to center before I change direction. And I think actually I wanna do this corner. Hmm. Actually, maybe not. 
I'm going here. What direction I go is determined by how the paint is setting up, but also if there's something I want to keep. I tried to address that last so it doesn't get stretched in a way that I don't want. Okay, again, coming back to center before I change directions. I'm going to move slowly. I don't want to distort my focal point. So the slower I move, the better chance I have of not destroying that composition. Okay, Woo, just made it. All right, and again, slowly back to center. Now the weight of my paint is right about here. And I'm going to try, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to keep this. I'm gonna try. Let me see if I have any more juice in anything here just to help it slide along a little easier. Sometimes as it sits, it can set up a bit and get a skin and then it doesn't slide off quite as easily. Okay, let's see if that helps. Gonna be tight, y'all. Can I do it? Woo! Just made it. Okay. Now I'm just going to adjust my focal point to where I want it. Again, using the weight of my paint to help me move the section that I want. Well, it appears I'm going to be getting these copper cells popping up in there. So, 
I think I want to dump some of this off. I know some of y'all are going to yell about that, but I think these kind of ethereal copper cells that are popping up are a bit more interesting than what's going on here. And the more I stretch this, the more of that is going to happen. And you'll see the weight of my paint is here. So this is coming off, but this really isn't. It's pushing this area the most. Okay, and I'm gonna come back because these have stretched out quite a bit. And I kind of want to give them their shape back a little bit. But that stretching action is going to allow for some of these copper cells to pop through. Okay. I think that's it. I'm going to leave it alone. And uh, I'm going to bring you in for a close-up back in a few. Okay, here it is. I did have some cells pop up in that area, but I still have a good focal point there. And I kind of picture it hanging this way. That's how I'm seeing it. But some cool 3D action, got some beautiful sparkle in those cells and of course the copper really pops in that corner I did not want to lose that I really wanted to keep that this this painting would have been a bust for me if I did not have all that copper in the bottom to kind of draw the eye in to that darker area but that's what we have i hope you enjoyed i hope you learned something if you did please like share and subscribe if you are subscribed please make sure you click that bell so you are notified when i put up new content and you will find in the description box links to my PayPal tip jar if you feel so inclined. My affiliate links, DecoArt being one of them. Uh, get your hands on some of these magical cell making paints. Uh, there is a coupon code and any of those affiliate links that you use in my description box. I receive a small commission of anything that you purchase through them. At no additional cost to you, that includes Amazon. Buying a washing machine on Amazon? Use my affiliate link. Help a sister out. Uh, <laughs> um, yes, also in the description box, you will find the link to our Facebook group. Go make some art. Join us there. Post your masterpieces. Ask your questions. Get some inspiration. A good time is had by most. It is the internet after all. You know how that goes. Can't please everybody all the time. Really cool stuff happening there. Okay. Well, I think that's it for me for today. I hope y'all have a beautiful day. Now, go make some art. <laughs>